To understand AWS's global infrastructure, we're starting with the most important thing in the room, and that is you. Starting with you, let's understand how global infrastructure works with AWS. Let's say that you have an application that you want to run or use in some capacity, and maybe it's got some content or some data that needs to be stored or used, which means that somewhere there's a server that is going to actually store and use that data. Now, historically, businesses would have to have their own places to store this data. We call them data centers. But once AWS became available, companies stopped having to have their own data centers and instead all started to use AWS. And AWS just managed to involve a whole bunch of data centers. So what we ended up with was these huge big data centers that were scattered all over the world. Now, you might be thinking, wouldn't it be better to just have one massive giant data center? They had all of the different servers and everything that you needed in one place. Why do we spread them out everywhere? I mean, if something was to happen, maybe there was an earthquake or a tsunami or a fire in that one data center, first of all, then everything would be lost, which would be not good for us, not good for AWS or Amazon either. And second, you need something special called high availability and fault tolerance in order to do this well. High availability is having access to all of that data that's in those data centers easily and quickly. And then fault tolerance is basically if something breaks, how quickly can we fix it and get it back up and working? Like a tolerance to things going wrong. How high is your tolerance for things going wrong? If you're a data center, it needs to be pretty damn high. <laughs> and so because of these reasons, we don't have everything just sitting in one great big data center. Instead, we have AWS regions. Now, regions are the different places all over the world that AWS has data centers. They include locations like Paris, Tokyo, Dublin, and Ohio, and many more. And each region is completely isolated from other regions in the world. No data is going to move in and out of a region without explicit permissions, which means that there's very high security and very high data sovereignty, which is basically just obeying the local laws around data that each country has. Because you have to make sure that if you're storing data about people, every country has their own rules about how that data is actually stored. So we want to be keeping in line with those. For example, you might have some customers in Germany. And in Germany, you can't have any data about people in Germany leaving Germany, which means that you're going to have to store all data about German peoples in a data center that's in Frankfurt. And it can never leave Frankfurt. So you obviously want to take into consideration a few different things, including that sort of compliance side when you're choosing what AWS region is best for you. Now, you don't just want to be taking into account the laws, which is this kind of one here that we have around compliance, but you also want to take into mind proximity. How physically close is this data center to where you want to be? How close is this availability zone to where you are or to where your customers are? Proximity is the physical distance between the region and your customers or whoever you want to be receiving the data from that region. For example, if most of your customers live in Singapore, then you're going to want to consider a region that is in Singapore. You can, of course, use services that are based in another region, but you've got to be aware that it's actually going to take longer for you to get those services. We call the time that you're wasting there latency. So if you are waiting a long time, then you have high latency. You're also going to want to take into account feature availability because different regions have different features and services. Every year, AWS is releasing hundreds of new features and services to the public, but some of those services require huge hardware updates in each AWS region. So AWS has to go physically out to these places and update them manually one by one, which means that some regions aren't going to have the latest and greatest until other regions have been updated. And finally, we have pricing. Pricing is a big one. <laughs> Every region is going to charge you differently for different services because there's differences in tax and labor costs to maintain that region. For example, in Brazil, it actually costs way more, about 50% more to run any of their services than in the United States. This brings us to availability zones. Availability zones exist within a region. One region is going to have lots of different availability zones and each availability zone is a single or a group of data centers. Availability zones are located at least 10 miles apart. And this is mainly because if there was a large natural disaster, you don't want all of your availability zones going out in one go. 
AWS recommends always running at least two availability zones per region, just in case something goes wrong in that area. But it's totally up to you where you choose these availability zones and in what regions you choose them. Now, if you think that's the most granular level that it gets to, you'd be wrong because there's another level, which is edge locations. So we've gone from regions to availability zones to edge locations. Now, edge locations are even closer to customers, so they go into even more remote areas or closer to major cities so that you can have even faster time for your users or your customers. They're really great for keeping copies of your data very close to your customers. So great for casing because it means that customers aren't going to have to wait a long time for something to load. Isn't it wild the lengths that we've gone to to make sure that we get data and things load on the internet really quickly? It blows my mind. But happy learning. Enjoy all of the new things that you can create and learn with global infrastructure, availability zones, regions, and edge locations. And we'll see you in the next video.